Good evening and welcome to tonight's Live and Cooking. Tonight's show is brought to you by Great British Chefs and Vitality, the health and life insurance company that rewards you for being healthy. Like us, they believe that at the heart of a healthy lifestyle is cooking food from scratch. And so together, we have worked with some of Britain's greatest chefs to create inspirational content that will help you to live a more healthy lifestyle by cooking great dishes at home. If you want to know more about the campaign, check out the website that you can see on your screens now. I am honoured tonight to welcome one of Britain's most highly regarded chefs. He ran a Michelin two-star restaurant for over 20 years and recently took over his own restaurant, Limpston Manor in Devon. He has been awarded an MBE for services to hospitality and is known for his classical cooking and his celebration of local ingredients. Tonight, honoured to welcome Michael Kane. Michael, nice thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Great to be here. So, what are, we, what are we going to cook this evening? Well, you know, the challenge really is about how do we make sort of poaching, uh, you know, something which is healthy, you know, easy to do at home. So, we thought we'd do this wonderful Asian broth with vegetables, some noodles, and I want to just show how we can just take something as simple as ingredients, these wonderful vegetables that we'll talk about in a minute, and poach them with this lovely stock, and how do we get flavour into it? And of course, do it in a way which is suitable for vegetarians, but also we're going to talk about some nice little tricks to take what is a vegetarian dish and turn it into something which will be vegan, or even something that might involve protein, egg, chicken, or fish. Awesome. So no meat on the counter tonight. This is going to be no. awesome. Well, listen, if you have any questions to ask, just fire them away at us and a little birdie in my ear will pass them to me and we will try and answer your questions. And we're going to run a draw. So for anyone who asks a question this evening, we will enter you into a draw to win a £50 Ocado voucher. So you can win a voucher and you get to ask Michael, one of Britain's greatest chefs, questions you want about cooking, poaching, how to make vegetarian food interesting. So let's get cracking. Well, I think the first thing is, we, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, how do we get flavour into something? And I just say it's about layering. So we're going to start with quite a generic stock. Now, you can buy vegetable stock. So what I'm going to use here is a vegetable stock we can get from most supermarkets. Now, generally speaking, I wouldn't, I'm not going to be the first one to say that, you know, it's going to be full of flavour. It will be a certain flavour, but I, what I want to do now is add some great Asian flavour to it. Very, very simple. So we're going to put that in the pan. So you're pan. using this really as a base. This is a Absolutely. simple store-bought veg stock. Now, if somebody said to me, how would you make a vegetable stock at home? I would say, well, basically, let's get a vegetable. So, you know, leek, fennel, carrot, onion, garlic, you know, with some thyme and bay leaf. Bring that to the boil. Cook it out for a good hour, slowly. Okay. Get all the flavours out. And at the end, add some, you know, soft aromats. So if you want to get some spice in there, you get some mini spice in there, yeah. pink peppercorns in there. And then leave that for 24 hours and get this wonderful fragrant stock. So you for, would leave the stock for 24 hours before you yeah, actually used it? Yeah, and leave the awesome. vegetables in. I'm in then charge. the microplane is going to release these wonderful flavours from the ginger. Now we're going to do ginger two ways. We're going to do it one way in the broth, and the other way I'm just going to cut very, very finely. And this is going to be sliced. This I'm going to put in at the end, but I'll just slice it now and get it out of the way. Now what we're going to do is just going to bring, once you've done that, onto the heat and bring it to the boil. Now into that... I'm going to add one of my favourite aromats, uh, really fragrant, and, and to get this flavour coming out, what I'm going to do is hit this lemongrass. Just absolutely stunning. Have a smell of that. Oh. It just it really is fantastic. So, and ginger, actually, lemongrass. What it, so of the, of the things we've got here, so we've actually got some ingredients that people may not be kind of yeah. that familiar with. So what have we got? We've got, so, we've got ginger and, and yeah, lemongrass in. We do. And then we've got here, we've got star anise, we've got chilli, uh, garlic, which is pretty uh, obvious. Here we have shiitake mushroom, uh, right. some limes, some noodles, some uh, water chestnuts, and then we have Chinese cabbage, pak choy, and then we have some Thai uh, basil, which is slightly different than normal basil, and some uh, lovely uh, spring onions. And then I've got here a selection of dark soy, fish sauce, optional, obviously yep. leave that out if you're a vegan, and then this lovely sesame oil, which we bring together at the end, and for a little bit of texture, I've got these lovely sesame seeds, lightly toasted. And these are all ingredients that you can get in any supermarket. None of this is kind of chef-y, impossible to source stuff. This is all stuff that's available at most places, isn't it? It is. I think the spirit of what we're trying to do with uh, Vitality is to bring uh, creative thinking to uh, everybody 
uh, everyday lives, I suppose. Everybody walks past the supermarket, and we're so blessed in the UK yeah. to have such an array of wonderful ingredients. And, you know, yes, sometimes there'll be, you'll have a run on things, but most of the ingredients that we've got here is, is accessible, and yeah. I think that's important. So one of the... Uh, so I've got a question for you, Michael. Yeah. So Shirley has asked, could you add chicken to this? I and mean, obviously, if you didn't want to go pure vegetarian, could you add, you know, another level with, by adding chicken? Great, great question. So chicken, let's, we'd start off with, a, say, like a, I like to use, for instance, uh, thighs or, 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 or legs. What I would do is take off the skin. Yeah. I would put them in some water with, a, with onion, bring that to the boil, and let that poach out very, very slowly. When it's cooked, remove the legs, and then that stock that we've got left is the stock to which then we add the ginger, the lemongrass. Now I'm going to add some star anise, and I'm going to take... Uh, a chilli and I'm going to slice that too and I'll have some sliced in a minute as well for finishing so this will get a little bit of heat great, into, bit of the, heat. into the face. Shirley, thank you for that question that was great if you want to ask a question just far away once again you've got a chance to win a 50 pound Ocado voucher and ask Michael any question you like about how to make the most out of your cooking so now, you've got some chilli in there you've got some star anise yes and now what I'm going to do is take some garlic we're going to cook this stock out for a good uh, 15 to 20 minutes you can do it a little bit less. So all I'm going to do is hit the top of some garlic. Okay, in it goes. And then we're going to pass that out. So the base... And you're not worrying about chopping that up? Because often no. some people think chefs spend a lot of time it's all about the really fine chopping. You know, you're just throwing, throwing them in. We are because we know that we're going to get a release of flavour. You know, what we've got to do, you know, if I was sweating and I was going to, you know, you know add some oil, I'll, I'll chop that or crush yeah. it and then I'll leave that in the sauce. This is going to be passed out. Later, I'm going to add some more ingredients, and we're going to then uh, leave that as part of the vegetable garnish. But this is an infusion, so we'll bring that up to the boil. We'll get the heat, the chilli, lovely uh, lemon grass, the lemony flavour from the lemongrass, the anise uh, spice, which is great persistence on the palate, and, of course, that back note of the garlic is going to be brilliant. You can, if you want, at this stage, put some coriander seed in it, yeah possibly some stalks, uh, whatever you want to infuse it. This is where you can be a little bit creative. You might like uh, one particular flavour, a bit of cinnamon in there, whatever. But for me, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple at this stage. Whilst There's I'm doing question. that... We've got questions flying in now. We're going to really keep interrupting you, Michael. So someone's asking, perfectly timing, asking about mushrooms. How, someone's saying that actually they find it hard to kind of keep them kind of fresh and they can get really soggy and stuff. What's the trick to kind of cooking mushrooms and treating them well? Because, you know, how do you make sure they're clean? How do you kind of make sure they don't get soggy? Really good question, and you know what? Like anything, you can overcook it. Mushrooms don't need a huge amount of cooking. They're mainly water, so they'll be about 70 to 80% water, and you're gonna see when I cook these mushrooms, once I cut them nice and thin, they'll go in towards the end. They have a, a texture to them uh, that, that you wanna retain, and all about the cooking of this dish really is what you do at the last minute to give the vegetables its own individual texture, but at the same time work really well with this wonderful bouillon. And if you can get shiitake, which is what I'm using yeah. here, you can use uh, you know, chestnut mushrooms or something like butter mushrooms. It's funny, and some people are often afraid of, you know, the reality is you, know, you don't need to cook any of these vegetables. You can eat them, you know, yes, you can eat them all raw. Yeah, you can. So actually, Lovely in salads. You know, the reality is better to undercook almost than overcook. Yeah, I mean... We're talking about healthy eating, and you know? I remember yeah. growing up with my mum, and she used to cook vegetables to, to death, and, you know, they, they lose their colour, they lose their nutrients. Yeah. Now there's this real trend now to, to lightly cook things, retain a bit of texture, but at the same time, you know, keep them fresh and, and keep those uh, lovely, uh, you know, goodness in, if you like. So what I want to do is just uh, cook the vegetables uh, that are green last minute in boiling bouillon, but things like the lovely... Uh, shiitakes can be added first. So what I'm going to do to finish... Just, I'm yeah, gonna... We've got no, these questions are just coming Fantastic. in. Fantastic. So great, great question about tofu. And actually, um, so it's from Bonnie and in, in Vet, yep. um, who were asking, um, how do you make sure if you're cooking tofu in this, when do you put it in? How do you make sure that, that it's not overpowered? Actually, it's got quite a delicate flavour, hasn't it? How would, you, how would you use tofu in a dish like this? Well, <laughs> tofu for me is best marinated. So what I would do is I'd take some of that soy... And, and I'll put the tofu, let it marinate a little right. bit, okay? Then it's just about reheating. And, right. and like uh, anything that's delicate, put it in at the end. It doesn't have to be boiling hot. Mm -hmm. It needs to just be warm. So what we're going to do with that tofu is I would put it with a little bit of um, completely vegetarian, so just a little bit of dark soil, light soil, 
a little bit of sesame oil, let that marinade, yeah. you know, and then bring it out and just drop it through this bouillon towards the end. And, I, and you can remind me a little bit later when I add uh, all of those other ingredients, I'll just say to you, this is when we will add our tofu. Because you're saying actually you don't need to cook the tofu out, you're just, you're just really adding it just to heat it through. Again, you know, tofu, you, if you want to grill it first, uh, marinate it, grill it, and then put it on. That's a nice way of getting a little bit more yeah. flavour into it. But generally, what I would do with tofu is, uh, you can, if you want to keep, it's different types of, uh, you know, tofu. But you know, you have to be careful. Your fresher stuff is more delicate. Yeah. But you just want to think about, you know, what are you trying to achieve with adding the tofu? You want to impart a little bit of flavour to it. So, you, so rather than trying cooking out on the bouillon, marinate it first so it absorbs some of that flavour then drop it in towards the end. It'll add its own characteristics, its yeah. own texture, which is a really nice alternative. So it's about, it's about laying. That was a great question. Thank you very much. And as I said, if you want to ask a question, just fire them in. You'll get to hear Michael's advice on how to treat various ingredients. And also, you get the chance to win the £50 Ocado voucher. One of the, so what are, you, what are you chopping here now? One this of the great ingredients I love using in this style of cooking is uh, Chinese uh, cabbage, which is what I've got there. And then I've got some lovely pak choy or bok choy, sometimes it's I mean, referred you were, you were, to. You were eating this cabbage like it was an apple earlier. Oh, I, mean, I just love it. You know, if I, if I, I was saying, you know, it's, it, it's got this really crisp element to it. It is unctuous. It's full of mostly water and it really is textured. So we don't overcook that. It's a pleasure to eat it because mm. of that texture. Don't overcook that. If you were thinking about what is this in terms of cooking style, it's a bit like a stir fry. Oh, everything's going to go in the last minute. It's just going to cook very, very gently in the broth towards the end. So what I'm trying to achieve is that I'm cutting up things like the pak choy so it has character because that yep. will be its presentation. So it's going to hold it together, isn't it? And at the same time, it's going to cook and it's going to cook in the time that I've got it to cook in because as soon as you add the lime towards the end of this, the vegetables, because of the acidity, will turn brown. So we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is always add your veg into a boiling stock, but at the same time recognise too that you want the texture to be nice and crunched. These are, these are this sort of really lovely, juicy, what I call lush type styles of uh, vegetables, which really are, are delicious. So what now I've got... We're, we're, we're cooking an Asian dish today, but actually Limston Manor is not is not an Asian restaurant. No. Um, tell me a bit about Limston Manor. What are you, what are you trying to achieve there? And what, what, what's the sort of the vision and what, you know, well, paint a picture for people who haven't yet had the chance to, oh, to visit. It's a, it's a wonderful picture, a huge uh, um, privilege to have uh, that as the realization of a dream. 28 acres, we've got uh, 10.5 of them planted now under vine. We have 17,500 vines for uh, hopefully creating a, a wonderful English sparkling wine in three years time. Then we've got 21 bedrooms, beautiful bedrooms overlooking the river ex estuary uh, and out to sea over the Bay of Lyme. And we have three dining rooms which are beautifully appointed. And you know, and that I've already achieved within six months of opening a Michelin star, Relais and Chateau Estate as well, five, five stars. It really is a fantastic property. And it's a, it's a pretty special, I mean, you've, you've got yeah. a, I mean, you know, it, it's an old building as well, you know. Yes. But I remember going down there and visiting it when it was, I think I was in a hard hat and it was, it was <laughs> yeah. very much like, you know, you, you took that place right back to the bare walls and you've built it up to create somewhere that's a pretty, um, a pretty special destination. It is a very special destination and like anything, you know, that, 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 that's going to be developed. It takes time and takes patience, but it also takes a, a huge amount of investment and courage uh, to turn, you know, what was an old, you know, country house into uh, a beautiful, luxurious uh, hotel. And, 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 and with it, you know, we represent the region in terms of local uh, ingredients. We've got uh, two wonderful farm shops that we work with. One is uh, for seafood, it's Greendale, absolutely stunning. All the fish gets landed in Brixham or and or uh, Exmouth. So in terms of food miles, it's very, very uh, low impact. And, the, and one of the other things we have is a wonderful darts farm for our meat. There's a wonderful butcher up there. We've got some fantastic uh, beef, uh, lamb from the Powdingham Estate, which is across the river, and venison in the uh, autumn and winter too. But also we have, you know, uh, pork, chicken, all from Devon. So and it's amazing. You're Cornish stuff so locally, aren't you? Amazing. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So good question has come in. So um, Chris doesn't want to use chili. You were saying earlier you weren't a big chili fan yourself. Yeah. You know, it's about moderation. So if you want to get that kind of flavour profile and that sort of that excitement, I'll call it as a, yeah. as a chili lover. A what would you swap? What swap out if you want to remove the chili? Peppercorns, quite nice. You know, yeah. black, black or white pepper corns infusion, 
really nice. But you know, chili's got its own, it is what it is. It's, it's spicy and it's, it's in, in a sense that we'd recognize it to be hot. Yeah. But spice is all about aromats, okay? Yeah. So, you know, you can be more aromatic. So if you don't want the heat, but you want more spice, you can put things in like cinnamon, for yeah. a lovely yeah, yeah. flavor. Um, so what I say to people is, look, the spice element, the heat is a nice back note, but we're gonna tame that a little bit mm. later with some lime towards the end. But if you don't want chili, but you still want a little bit of mild heat, just swap that out with a few peppercorns, put them in now, let them cook out, and then strain them off, and you get a softer pepper. And there are also lots of different heat. chilies, aren't there? There are yeah. lots more kind of, you know. Of course. There are a whole variety um, of, of different chilies. Some of them are stronger, and if you take the seeds out, you can get a bit of that mm. flavor without having, having some of the heat. Quite. So it's interesting at this stage, because what we've got is a bouillon, which we've added, uh, to recap, um, We've added in there the star anise, the lemongrass, the garlic, and the chili. And that's now turned up. It's a very boring stock into something really quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. That is the backbone to which now is going to create this lovely dish. So what we do now, after about 10 to 15 minutes, is we just simply, uh, this has done its job. We just pour them out, like so. A little bit of a chili heat back note on that. So you can now adjust it. And then what we do is we're going to add back in just a little bit of water from the, the cooking time. Yep. Um, what we have is just to top it up, really, because we're going to add all the other ingredients. Now, what I like about uh, noodles is that they add a little bit of texture and a bit of carbohydrate. Now, these are soft noodles, which are already cooked. Now, you can buy your own noodles that are dry, which is good. Just cook them in uh, boiling water, a little bit of soap to the nice and soft, strain them off, and then rinse them through cold water, and then there they are. So some people, some people um, don't necessarily like noodles as much. Could you make this dish with rice? Because you can often see those sort of Asian um, ingredients. This is a question from Anne was asking, Good could question, you replace yeah. the noodles with, with rice? Thank you, Anne, for the question. As I said, keep the questions coming. Michael's going to answer it now. As again, got a chance to win an Ocado voucher and also get Michael's advice on how to create things. So... Well, the answer to that is yes. I would, you know, this is a lovely dish. Um, you know, I would say if you're doing something uh, vegetarian, you know, you can add, I'll cook your rice, serve it separately, yep. um, and then uh, rather than put it back through uh, the actual dish itself. So have it as a separate, have yeah. it as a side. Listen, I've got this lovely Thai basil. Yeah, which, tell me, because that's one of those things. That's probably the only ingredient there that at times, you know, you, when you, you have to sort of occasionally seek it out a bit. Yeah. Supermarkets aren't as good at having the variety in that. They'll often have regular sort of European basil. Yeah, well, this is, this is what Thai basil looks like. Yeah. And an and actual fact, you know, if you compare that to a European basil, which is much more yeah. familiar. So you've got the two. Yeah, there. very, it's just a, a larger leaf. Very similar mm. in profile. And, and the answer is, if you haven't got any Thai basil, just use uh, good old basil. Tear it up. I've lightly chopped it, and I'm going to put that through there. So now... Yes. What I have is I need to, I've sliced this so you've ginger. you've got the start, and now you're going to start. This is the, Absolutely. Sort of, this is the second part This of it, is the it? second part of it. And, and, you know, timing is everything. So if you're not ready to go with it and serve it, do not go forward with it with all those items. Because you could, I mean, you could have had this bit ready, you know, if, if actually for dinner. You could have prepped all this before, and it essentially, you know, the moment you start prepping, we're five minutes really away totally, from, from totally. serving. Totally, totally. So, you know, just, just pause. So what I'm going to do is, is always be mindful of the fact that I want to get the ginger back in there cooking a little bit and I want to get these chilies in uh, as well cooking a little bit just to, to just to cut through them and, and and I think you know if I was thinking about uh, poaching uh, you know fish is something you can do towards the end as well so what I would do is I will thinking about when I put things back in mm. and you've got to heat them through if it's tofu we'd add that a little bit later if it's chicken and it's already cooked we'll, we'll shred that and then just put that through at the last minute fish you'd want to bring it in before what's a nice idea is you actually take some of the stock off poach the fish separately and then add it back in uh, later so it's more so precise. you can actually control the fish and it's actually yes exactly and we were talking about poaching as well you know poaching is not just for vegetables not just for fish for meat think about what also you know if i was poaching fruit really good way of cooking nice and healthy too you know, low amount of sugar, 30% sugar to, 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 to liquid. And then in there, you can infuse things like cinnamon, vanilla as well. So typically, this time of year, you know, you can poach, 
you know, fruit that's in season. So, yeah. you know, I would like, like look to do you know, pears and apple in the latter part of the season. But now peaches are fantastic yeah. and, and nectarines as well as strawberries, poached yeah. strawberries as well. So rhubarb's just, you know, and still in too. And preserves things, doesn't it, as well? It so does, it does. You it can prolongs. keep stuff. So, you know, it's, it's a really good topic point. So what I'll do with the mushrooms is I will add them a little bit earlier and they can impart some of their flavour. And you're adding those first? Yeah, I'm adding them first because I want them to cook. They will take a little bit more time. You know, don't forget, mushrooms are about 70% water, you know, so they, they, their structure is actually, you know, and shiitakes are kind of like a, when you cook it, it almost like has this sort of, almost like a it's got meaty texture to yeah. it. So it's almost like a, a, a good replacement in vegetarian cooking. And, and I've got a couple of things here, which are, one is optional, one is not. I've got dark soy. You yeah. can use a light soy, but I've got some nice dark soy there. And the difference there. between dark and light soy? Well, it's just in the terms of how it's, it's fermented. You see how, how dark that is. And it's actually quite, um, the soy is quite dark. Whereas if you take the lighter one, it, it's, it's not so... It hasn't got as much flavour. Yeah, it's not so dominant. But yeah. for this particular dish, you want a little bit of that darkness. Yeah. Now, this is optional. This is fish sauce. Yeah, now, you know, it, if you're it? vegan, clearly you're not going to put this mm. in. Vegetarian uh, as well. So I'm going to put this in because it's just a great way of getting a little bit more flavour. So a bit of fish and sauce. And if, oh. if, if you wanted this dish to be vegetarian, but I mean, obviously, you, you think that the, the fish sauce adds a level of... Um, of flavour and depth. Is there any way of getting that same flavour without adding it? Just a bit more soy. Bit yeah, more soy. that's fine. Yeah, a little bit more soy. That's all. I think dark soy is pretty good anyway. And what yeah. I've got here is some water chestnuts. So let's get them in because we want them. Yeah, they, these are things that a lot of people don't cook with. So just water chestnuts. Well, water chestnuts. How do you use them? You know, I, I like them. Really, you see them a lot in Chinese cooking. It's yeah. often in a stir fry. It's got a nice little crunch and texture. Mm. So it's really quite a nice Asian uh, uh, little root veg that you can, you can use here. And I put it in there at this stage so that it absorbs some, <coughs> some of the flavour of the bouillon. Just be careful with the soy yeah. because that will salt it. So it's yeah. a natural seasoning for soap uh, in Asia. They don't add soap, so, so you see I've got no soap in here. Yeah. So I'm not using the traditional salt and pepper technique here. Yeah. I've got spice for heat with the chilli and I've got uh, seasoning soap. And you're coming. layering things yeah. in different ways, aren't you? You know, the it traditional is. European way of cooking will be using salt and pepper, but actually you're using soy and fish sauce and other things to actually get that layering and that flavour, aren't you? Absolutely. And then, you know, things like this cabbage and the pak choy, right at the end, we've got it all going on now. So, you know, back up to the boil. Now we're happy. We've got to get the cabbage in. OK. Get that mixed in and just get that... I mean, it's an amazing number of veg, you know, but you could be using any veg here in some ways. I mean, there's a, this principle could work with, you know, you could put carrots in, you could yeah, put broccoli in, you could put all sorts of other things. Carrots, yeah. carrots are a great example. You know, I've made the vegetable stock, so I've got those elements in here. The vegetable stock will have the carrot element in, in, in it, but, you know, if you like, you can, you, instead of wasting some of that veg, you can put that back in, or just slice, or, you know, your carrot nice and, and, and fine and, and get it in at the early stages. That I put in the first part is about a 10, you know, 15 to 20 minute cook time. Mm. So if you cut your carrots nice and, and fine, you'll be able to get them in. So yeah. now what I want to do is I want to think about the finishing touch it. So for the finishing touches, I've got some sesame oil, some sesame seed, the noodles, and also some lime. A little tip for your, your lime, just give it a roll before you cut it. So when you squeeze it, it's a little bit easier. I've already done that. So I've got two, uh, two limes here. That lime, what I'll do is I'll put some in the broth, but I also aware that the acidity in the lime will make the vegetables go dark, in, in brown in colour. So I'll, I'll also you know, put some wedges on the side. So we've got our pak choy, uh, which will go in now. We'll bring that back up. So we always want to put our green veg into boiling uh, stock, OK? So that keeps the vegetables nice uh, and green. Uh, and then, so here we've got our cabbage, Chinese cabbage, we've got the mushrooms, we've got the, the Amazing, chili. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it is really, it really lovely. And there's so many different things there. So we've got a great question from Harriet who's asking, you know, how long would this actually keep? I mean, is this something you should serve immediately? Or if there's some left over, it's something you'll put aside and come back to? Listen, you know, it, it's a great one if you've got some left over to just take in uh, the next day, microwave and reheat yeah. it. But, you know, it's such a, it's so, you know, somebody was asking me, you know, when I cook at home, you know, I haven't got time, you know, what, what's the best way of cooking? I said, look, you know, recipes are often, you know, the ones that are easy to do are salads and stir fries and, and things like bouillons. And it's so, so quick and easy to do that, you know, do a little bit more and take it the next day. But 
anything that you you know have that's going to be kept for a long time loses its freshness yeah. starts to lose its edge so one of the things you can do for instance is make the first bouillon do a little bit more yeah put it in reserve and then just bring it back up to uh, to get the boil and then chuck in all those ingredients at the end so now we'll come to the Great. end now of we're the finished yeah the well so this is the you just you're looking for texture we don't want to yeah. overcook that so we're going to turn that off and right at the end now in goes our, our noodles so right. we're going to warm so them through straight in straight in absolutely and then the very dying moments i don't want to um these are what i call the finishing little touches over right. here because we've got our thai basil and we've got a little bit of uh nicely cut at the angle uh beautiful uh, spring onion so what i'm going to do is put the thai basil in let's get that that mixed up Beautiful. See, there's that's loads of texture. Texture for me doesn't come from something being thick, with uh, with you know arrowroot or thickened with uh, flour or, or reduction. Texture for me is also about what's in the soup. Yeah. So here you're getting that tip, like a minute. Actually, it's quite interesting looking at the proportions of the soup versus all, all the stuff inside. It's you know, I mean, this is almost like a. There's so much. It's almost like a stew. There's so much you've got in there. There is, and look, I mean, you know, you know, when you, even though you're doing it at home, that's. You know, this is for about two people. Start yeah. off your noodles, you know, put them on, and then think about, there's four bits of pak choy per portion, so lay, lay, they lay them in nicely, and then we'll, we'll, then we'll bring the ladle in, into play, uh, and then we'll look at how we might season this. Um, sorry, not season it, but how we might finish this with the, the rest of all the it's items. Great, it's a great example of just how I think chefs turn a, what is a very simple dish on center just by plating it beautifully, by putting, by choosing to put the noodles in the center and then building everything out around and then ladling stuff around it. You're just getting a plate that Absolutely. looks more like something, you, you know, something that you've really thought about. You know, I like the fact that actually the thing that looks beautiful is the fact you can see the ingredients, this yeah. clear bouillon, you know, it's actually beautiful you know if you've taken a bit of time and to to invest in cutting that vegetable you want to show it off and yeah. so here we have the chestnuts water see chestnuts variety, here can't you? you can see everything see the and what i like to do now is is you know a little bit of color with the, that it's finished with it we've got some lovely sesame oil uh, which is going to be put around you see it floating in the bouillon and then we've got some Slice, brilliant. Uh, spring onion. Having that texture, isn't it? Yeah, a little crunch. It's it's nice. Um, so it's, it's it's one of those things where it's nice to have a little bit of raw element, and then with yeah. a little bit of toasted sesame seeds, and of course at the end as well, just going to put on a little squeeze little of lime and yeah. get that on. You can put it in the pot, which I'll do in a minute because I'm going to have that for my tea, <laughs> and. That's it, and you can see Brilliant. it, it looks delicious, smells delicious, and what I love about it is that it's quick, easy to do, in real time, here we are, cooking something as uh, simple as that, and if, you know, I wanted to add the tofu, when I added the noodles is when I was at the tofu. If I was at it, add poaching fish, and I cut it into a nice dice about that size, I'd add that just towards the end, three, four minutes, just to poach it through, or get my chicken, shred it, Add it back at the same time as you add the noodles, just to heat them up. Yeah. And a really nice tip too, if you take this as a vegetarian, but you want protein, you know, how about whisking in an egg? Crack Which an egg, the, yeah. whisk it, put it where in. Where would you do that? Just towards just the towards end? Just towards the end, and yeah. just give it a stir, and you get a lovely noodle broth, you know, it's really, really nice. And people say gluten-free, just omit the, the noodles, and then just stir in the egg. At the end, it's a nice one. So you sort of, this is Asian broth, there's various different techniques, if you go to Japan, uh, if you go to uh, China or to uh, Asia and sort of Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, they're very similar. There's things like pho or, you know, they're very, very, very similar things. So, you, you know, you, with a little bit of imagination, that can be ad adapted and you can change it and turn it into something that's got protein in it as well. And that is a really simple dish. Listen, we've run out of time. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. It's been amazing. And once again, you've been watching the Vitality Cooking Show. Um, this is, I mean... Uh, such a great simple dish to make at home it's healthy it's delicious and actually we've knocked that up in 20 odd minutes with a lot of chat so yeah. you know that was awesome and listen michael's me hang around afterwards so if you want to ask any more questions please do fire them away once again you've got that chance to win an ocado voucher for your questions and do hang around now because we're going to show you another film where michael shows you how to create another amazing dish so once again thank you so much michael for joining us hugely okay. appreciate it really simple and wonderful dish and thank you all for joining us and for asking so many incredible questions. Good night.
Hello, I'm Michael Kane, chef owner of Limston Manor in Exmouth, and today I'll be making a gently poached hake served with honey and soy vinaigrette, a dish the whole family will enjoy. I'll be poaching hake, one of the best ways to cook fish. Not only is it really quick and easy, but it's also a very healthy method, as you don't need to use any fat such as oil or butter. This method ensures that the ingredients are cooked gradually and retain all of their moisture. So we're going to start with these quick pickled mushrooms. So first of all, let's take our olive oil. So we're just going to heat that and add our shallots, which I've chopped nice and finely. So we're going to add a pinch of salt and pepper and also some fresh thyme. Lovely. So we're just going to cook the shallots until they're translucent, but we don't want to colour them. And then we're going to add our mushrooms. There we go, perfect. Get our mushrooms in. And now straight away add the lemon juice. Good squeeze of the lemon. Need that acidity, just for the pickling. It's a nice slow cook now. So now just put a lid on. Just gonna let that sweat for a couple of minutes and leave that to cool. So now it's time to poach the hake. Notice that I'm gonna be poaching it with the skin on. This is because it's a very fragile fish and it just helps keep it together whilst we cook it. And when it's cold, we'll remove it later. So into the pan, we're going to be using some vegetable stock. And into that, we're going to impart some herb. So we've got some thyme here, and a lovely big bay leaf. This is a fresh leaf. Give it a little crunch in the hand, just to release those lovely aromats. We're going to bring that up to the boil with some seasoning and pepper. So now, we're going to put the fish into it whilst boiling and then immediately put a lid on and then turn it off and leave it in the liquid for two minutes. Okay, so that's about two minutes. So we'll have a look. Lovely, looks perfect. Got a tray here that I've lined with parchment paper. So we'll remove the fish. And now we're gonna leave that to rest for 10 and then you can put it in the fridge until you need it. So now for this honey and soy vinaigrette, which is a great sweet sour combination. So I've got some clear honey here that we're gonna put into the bowl first. Mustard is a good emulsifant too, so I'm using Dijon mustard. And then into that, we're going to add our dark soy. And also we have this lovely balsamic vinegar. Just gonna whisk those together. And now with just a pinch of Chinese fire spice, some white wine vinegar. Then we want to emulsify that. We have some extra virgin olive oil. Whisk this in nicely. Almost like making a mayonnaise. Add a little at a time. So great, now we're ready to plate this wonderful piece of hake. So we're just going to take a small knife and just peel back from the edges. And uh, so there we go. So there we have our healthy poached hake with honey soy vinaigrette pickled mushrooms, spring onion and radish. You can find lots more healthy recipes at greatbritishchefs.com and also with Vitality Online magazine. Thanks for watching and enjoy.
Devon. He has been awarded an MBE for services to hospitality and is known for his classical cooking and his celebration of local ingredients. Tonight, honoured to welcome Michael Kane. Michael, nice thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Great to be here. So, what are, we, what are we going to cook this evening? Well, you know, the challenge really is about how do we make sort of poaching uh, 